In this video, we're going to take a closer look at cylinders with respect to subdivision modeling. So first off, I'm going to create a cylinder and I'm going to ensure that our vertices are set to eight. I'm going to select the cap that we have here and invert our selection and get rid of the rest of it. Now I'll just set origin to geometry and I'm going to send this to the 3D cursor. Then I'll select our face once again. I'll insert it once, a second time, and a third time. So once I do this, I'm just going to get rid of this ring that we have here. And I'll create a duplicate of this and set this off to the side. So I'm going to be working on two different resolutions. Just to illustrate the importance of having enough resolution when working with cylinders. So for this one, I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier with one level and for this i'll make sure that we have two level so i'm going to go ahead and select the first one again and apply this and then i'm going to select these two faces this face and connect it here and connect this one here and before um i actually forgot to connect these together here before I apply that subdivision surface modifier so that we have all quads and so that when we subdivide it we get better topology so let's go ahead now and accept this so we have better topology here now and I'm gonna select this one and connect this connect this so this is the shape that we're going to be working with today and I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier once again. And then on top of this, I'm going to add a solidify modifier. And I'm going to increase our thickness to something like this. And I'll go ahead and accept that. So now what we're going to do is we want to ensure that let's just go ahead and undo this for a second. So what we want to do is ensure that we can after turning all this off, I want to ensure that I can preserve this edge here, the sharpness that we have here for this detail. So let's go ahead now and apply this. I need to increase the thickness again because that was undone and then apply it. So in order to preserve our edges, like I mentioned in the last video, we've got to use supporting edges and I'm going to do so. All right, and I'm only going to work on one quadrant or one side rather and mirror everything over. So I'm going to be adding control loops to all of this like so. Bear with me for a second while I add all our control loops. And now I'm going to mirror this over and then subdivide this. So you will notice that we have a problem here. So the supporting edges that we added here is disrupting the curvature. Let's just apply our mirror modifier. And on top of which, you'll notice that since we don't have enough resolution, the detail that we have here is kind of distorted. Even if I come in here and resolve this, you'll see that the detail that we have here is going to appear very distorted. So let's just go ahead now and try to resolve this. And I'm going to do this real quick. I'll come back in with the second example and explain what I'm doing. So even if I were to resolve this, for instance, you'll notice that our detail is very distorted and it's kind of being pulled and it's not circular like I want it to be. So this is one of the problems with working with cylinders. If you don't have enough resolution, you're going to quickly run into problems and you're going to have a mess. So you need to ensure that you have enough 
subdivisions. So now I'm going to go ahead and work with our second example here. So for this one, I'm setting it at a value of two for our subdivision levels, and I'm going to accept that. So before I do that again, I forgot to connect these. So let's go ahead and do that. Make sure that before you apply your subdivisions, that you have a quad cap. So now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and accept this. So now I'm going to go ahead and connect these together. So basically doing the same thing here, but the difference is this one has a lower resolution while this has a much higher resolution. So let's now go ahead and work with this. So I'm going to add another subdivision surface modifier. And just like we did with the first example, I'm going to add that solidify modifier and I'm going to increase the thickness. And I'll apply this. And this is the shape that I'm going to be working with, similar to this. So let's go ahead now and take a closer look at this and see how we can resolve this. So, first and foremost, I'm going to add some holding loops. And again, I'm going to work only on one quadrant or one side rather. And let me just go into face mode, select these, and let's get rid of them. And let's start adding our control loops. Like so. And let's bevel this. Like that. And one more loop here. And let's go ahead and apply the subdivision surface modifier and see what we've got. All right, now we are having a problem, which is basically that this control loop is causing some pinching here and it's disrupting our uh, surface so we've got to get rid of these so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select this vertice here this one here and this one here and i'm going to join them together to create this connection and then i'm going to select this edge right here and i'm going to dissolve it so that we have a quad I can now select these edges and get rid of them, like so. And we'll also just um, first delete these two and get rid of this and add a new cut. Add another cut inside here, and I'm just going to delete this bottom. I'll mirror this again later. Let's pop back into solid mode and just check to make sure everything is A-OK. -okay. And I'll mirror this over like so and accept it. Or yeah, let's just leave it at that for the time being. So what I did was I got rid of these edges that were causing that pinching by simply connecting these three edges together. So I'm going to repeat the same thing for this end here, like so, and basically the same thing, and getting rid of this loop here, as well as this one here, and dissolving them. Now that we've done that, we've gotten rid of that problem that we had there. So I'm taking a closer look and just making sure that we don't have any unwanted poles. So I just made a mistake here. I need to align this properly. So let's just go ahead and enable vertex snap. And switch to the top view.
and we were able to align that correctly. All right, so we have four edges meeting at this point, so we don't have any issues with three spoke poles or five spoke poles. And now that we've done that, we can go ahead and activate our subdivision surface modifier and take a closer look at this. So everything looks pretty neat. But if you want to achieve a much higher quality uh, bevel to these edges, we'll need to add an extra set of control loops. So let's go ahead and do that as well and add another set of loops here as well. And I'm going to do this all across so that we end up with just better edges overall. So add that in there. And I think we can add one, add one in here and one in here. And let's take a look at this. I'm going to add a loop here and bevel it as well to tighten this up. Let's get rid of this. This is not necessary. And we'll add one here. So now I'm just going to get rid of this side and mirror it once again so that we have symmetrical topology and apply that and we will add another mirror on the Z this time axis and let's just turn this off for a second and properly set our origin so cursor just selected and origin through 3d and let's turn this back on and apply that so we're good we can now send the origin back to the center and send our 3d cursor back there all right so let's take a closer look now so we can get rid of this edge it's unwanted this one as well unwanted and let's switch over to our shiny matte cap. And let's just check our reflections, make sure that it behaves the way we want it to. And let's switch back to what we had initially. So this is basically how you would go about adding details and then preserving the edges when you're working with cylinders. So the mesh is pretty dense, but that's what we need when we are trying to add details to cylinders and ensure that they hold up properly. So now if you wanted to animate the shape or deform it in any way, you can do so because we have all quad based topology. Now, if this is not going to be animated or, you know, deformed in any way, you can go about reducing the loops and let me just show you an example that i did beforehand so now i have three examples here so this one was done with a low resolution so let's just switch to this matte cap that we have here and you'll notice that let's pull out the annotate tool so you'll notice that the detail that we have here doesn't hold up well and it's sort of being pulled in this direction like so so this is what happens when you don't have enough resolution the detail doesn't hold up at all so now we have the second one which we worked on and this one has sufficient resolution so let's just take a look at this and we have all quad based topology here but this is a little dense and if you want to reduce this and it's not going to undergo any kind of animation or deformation, then we can reduce it. And this would be an example of a reduced mesh. So this still holds up well. If you compare the two, they look pretty much identical. In fact, they are identical. And the only difference is I've reduced the mesh here. 
And we do have some N-Gons here, but they are on a flat surface. So they're just confined to this flat surface here, and they don't seem to be causing any kind of a problem. You can see that there's no artifacts on our mesh. And if we were to add this shiny matte cap, you'll notice that the reflections are fine and the reflections are basically the same between these two. And so just to reiterate, when dealing with cylinders, you need to have sufficient resolution. That is the key to adding details to cylinders. And you want to ensure that you are wary of how you add your control loops and you want to make sure that you redirect them so that they don't cause any unwanted pinching and disrupt the curvature. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you learned something. And if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to support me on Patreon or grab a tutorial or some of my resources on Gumroad. And with that, I will see you in the next one.